God bless everybody this morning, all of you that are here in the house, and all of you that are watching through uh, Facebook or uh, soon enough will be YouTube. We just want to welcome you. We want to welcome you to God's house. We want to welcome you to the perfect place. And set the environment as, as we get ready to worship Him. Set the environment, whether you're here or you're at home, just set your environment. Tune in to God right now because it's all about God. And uh, those of you who are in house, uh, all of you want, if any of you want to open up the Word of God to Psalms 27, verse 4. And of course, those of you joining us on, online, also Psalms 27. 7 verse 4 and it says the one thing I ask of the Lord the thing that I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life delight in the Lord's perfections and make in his temple amen that is at least personally my desire is to dwell all the days of my life to be in the presence of the Lord in His house. And so today we have that opportunity to, no matter if it's here or wherever you're at, that you just set the tone and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to the fullest because that's what we're here to do. So all of you that are here, we just want to stand up with me and let's, let's just worship God as He deserves. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for giving us another day of life, for allowing us to come into your house, to be at home, because it's also a privilege to be just there in this moment with you right now, to just be filled, to receive a blessing, to, to hear your word, and to know that you have mighty great things for each and every one of us this morning. And this morning, we just want to thank you for our praise.
for your goodness, for your faithfulness. And there's no place we'd rather be but right now, here, in this moment with you, to worship you, to show me your love. Free last he has ransomed me 
voice is all the way up to your kingdom, Father Lord. To your kingdom, Father Lord. That's what we want it to be. We want to, we want to just become one with the angels, with the saints, and just worship you, Father Lord, as we would in the kingdom. Right now, here on earth, as it is in heaven, we worship you. Thank you. 
we come to be transformed. We come to receive from you. We come, Lord, expecting mighty words done within our lives that we might touch the love of others. So take this morning and glorify your name in our lives. And let your spirit flow in freedom. Let it worship your holy name by asking in your holy and precious name. Amen.
to be able to worship and pray, that is awesome. To share in that time with the rest of the people. But now it's time to receive for your own spiritual life. The direction God has for you. How God wants to bless you. How He wants to impact your life. How wants to create something awesome for you that you might know. That today is the beginning of something new. A new era in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. A deeper walk. A greater walk. A more committed walk. For the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the reason why today we stand in the presence of God. We go back to what we started this series of messages. We pray for the great harvest, he said. And the great harvest is being brought forth when Paul and when I, I'm sorry, Peter at the day of Pentecost. God up and he delivered a message and quoted what Joel said in the Old Testament. In the latter days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Speaking about revival at any time. If at any time there's going to be a revival, it's going to be now. It has to happen to the church people. It's not going to happen through a building. It has to happen through people. Members of a church that's in a congregation and receive not just a relationship to say, I'm saved and go to heaven. To have a deeper walk with the Lord. A deeper commitment with the Lord Jesus Christ. A desire to be, do greater and mightier things than in the Lord Jesus Christ. A hunger for bigger things that God has is still very loud. That's the reason why today we go there and said we begin to define the different signs that will define a believer. And we say, when you have a believer, the sign will follow. When you see an individual practicing these things, the Lord said, then this one is going to be a believer. Then we apply these signs to a church. I said, when you're looking for a church to worship at, make sure that these signs are present. They teach these signs. They practice these signs. Their desire is to still come out your hearts the things that the Lord has asked of your life. You see, we're not going to discuss denominations or the name of the church or who your pastor is. The important thing is, what did Jesus say about all this? When we go to the book of Mark, chapter number 16, verse number 15, he delivered the challenge. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. Then in verses 17 and 18, he gives us signs. He said, we're looking for a sign. You need to see something to identify with. Don't be confused. I'm going to give you visual signs of people that you should be looking for. Things will identify with the true meaning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What I'm going to back this up with is going to say, these are the people, this is what you need to follow, this is what you learn. So he goes in verse number 17 and 18 says, And these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues. I'm going to stop right there. Because that's where we're at this morning. To deal with that sign, and they will speak in new tongues. If there's any, any one of the signs that has been neglected of late, has been the speaking of tongues. You might say, hey, uh, Pastor, why are we doing this? Why are you quoting this? Because, you know, in order to be able to speak in new tongues, you have to be a believer that's not satisfied with the Sunday morning spirits. You've got to be more satisfied with them just coming to church on Sunday morning, clapping your hand, raising them up, and feel good about life and going out to face the world. There has to be a hunger, a desire, a passion for the Lord Jesus Christ. When we look at uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, the addition the Lord said, and he said about the condition we're supposed to meet in order to receive the healing that they God wants to let God and he says, and then they will seek my face. And they will pray and seek my face. In order to practice or to receive this speaking of new tongues, that has to have a lot of prayer, a lot of commitment, a lot of time with the Lord Jesus Christ. The seeking of the face of God until you find Him. Not five minutes of prayer, not a moment of prayer, but a commitment to stay on your knees or under, in His presence, standing. In, the visit position has got nothing to do with it. It's the disposition of the heart, the passion of desire that you have to receive from the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, when He said that you're going to seek the way, He said, You're going to stay there until I answer. We'll have fellowship, communicate, and when you show me interest, when you show me time, when you show me commitment, then I'm more than just a Sunday morning service, then I will give you the gift of speaking in new tongues or another tongue. So we see this, that's the reason why it's being neglected. Being put aside because, okay, you feel pretty good. How many want to have an amen, hallelujah? I'm going to say hallelujah, amen. That's good. That's fine because Jesus came to seek the lost. But well, once you have received the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord and Lord and Savior, you should desire one better step in your Christian walk. You should be satisfied just sitting back and saying, okay, I'm on the way to heaven. But God has called you to serve. He asked you in Mark 16, 15, to go and tell the Lord of peace and God reach to everybody, not just the passions. Not just the passions. Everyone that receive the Lord and Savior have this commission, the great commission to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So when you have this passion and the desire to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ, because you want to spend time with God, 
time you spend time with God, then God is going to honor your faith. I think there's a reason why the Lord Jesus Christ, when he spoke up prayer, he says, and when you pray, enter into your chamber and close the door, means just do and I. So you have a fellowship with God in which God can enter to your life. You can look around to what's happening around you and be mystified and be maybe horrified with things or sick or look at uh, that seem all around you. But he says when you come to prayer, I want you to close the chamber. I want you to get yourself away from everything around you. It will be just you and I. When you and God have that fellowship, and you make contact with God, and you're into the presence of Almighty God, God, good things are going to happen. When you begin to ask of God, this gift of speaking in tongues, He will honor your faith and then deliver unto you the gift of speaking in new tongues. See, new tongues aren't taught. It's not something you teach the church. The word that way people can say, oh yeah, you talk, and you do this, you do that, and you do the tongue, it's had nothing with that. The speaking of tongues is a gift of God, given by God, taught by no man. But that moment comes, the Holy Spirit will inspire you. And we will see in next week's message that when the day of Pentecost came, Scripture and they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this is not something I can teach you. I can speak to you. I can instruct you about seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit by speaking in other tongues, but I can't teach it. It's a gift of God in you. God gave it to you, placed into your life, to be used for His honor and glory and for His kingdom. So when we looked at this situation, you say, well, Pastor, why do people neglect this? Why do people choose to walk away from it? Because it takes work. It takes commitment. It takes time in your, in your behalf. It takes a, a dedication of your life. To the people who walk the Lord Jesus Christ, and the people are not willing to do this. We're too involved with our lives, we're too, too hurry with the things that have or don't have, the things that need to call many different things. The church Christ in what you think you need for your life, and you're putting aside what God has for your life. Therefore, as a believer in Jesus Christ, you have the responsibility to yourself as a believer to seek a better walk, a deeper walk the Lord Jesus Christ in order to go forward in your walk. There's many who want to say that this is the one time experience. If you see the day of Pentecost, well, the one time experience, it wasn't supposed to happen anymore. But you know, it's really ironic. Other people that want to kind of hide this about speaking in tongues, want to hide by saying it was a one time experience. But yet they believe. They believe the promises of God. They believe that Jesus said, I'll be with you and give your life to the end of the world. They believe in Psalm number 22, where it says, Though I walk through the valley, I shall death, I will fear no evil, because the Lord is going to be with me. You can take all the promises of God, call upon me, and I will answer. They think, oh, Lord, this is the word of God for people. What is the difference? I want to take you to the book of Matthew, chapter number 24, verse number 35, and what Jesus said. In chapter 24, he's speaking about the signs, the end time. He can deliver a challenge to your life. He said, I will say these things. And then he kind of puts a, like a bow, a red bottle, and he says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. What is written, what is said, is going to happen. What he promised is going to happen. When do we determine when it doesn't happen anymore? Who determines when it's done? Who determines when it's not no longer part of going to go on? As a believer in Jesus Christ, we need to understand that when Jesus said that things aren't going to change, what is written in the Word of God, how it happened in the Word of God, is not going to change. It's going to enter in that manner. They want to make it like saying, no, well, it's something uh, people are really fanatical. They're fanatical about their religion. No, no. We are really deep set in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and want to better the cause of Jesus Christ. We believe we're better believers. We can do a more efficient job when we have that gift of the Holy Spirit. So then they say, okay, well, let's go to the book of Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter number 13, where we speak about love. Now, let me set the record straight first of all. When the book of First Corinthians was first written, Jesus had already lived, died, Resurrected and ascended to heaven. I want to make that clear to you before we clarify this scripture, okay? Understand the first Corinthians is written to the words of the Lord after the ascension of Jesus Christ. It's in this time that we're here with. It's been going forward in the history of man. And when Paul begins to speak to them in that subject of love, look what he says in verse number 8. Okay? Love never fails. But when there is prophecy, it will fail. When there is tongues, they will cease. They say, see? The Bible says, and the tongues are going to cease. It says, and when there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. And I says, see, we're not in fullness of that. 
So we don't need to practice it. Let's see what the scripture was written. Scripture is to be defined in its full context. You can't pick and choose what you like. You've got to tell us what like it is. So we go to verse number 10. The answer to 8 and 9 is right there. Verse number 10, the scripture says the following words. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. He said, when the perfect has come. Remember, by this time Jesus has ascended to heaven. He has sent the Holy Spirit. And when he says when the perfect has come, and the only perfect one to come is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he hasn't come yet. He's coming for his church someday. He's going to rapture the church. It hasn't happened yet. When the perfect is coming, I agree with this. I agree with this. When Jesus comes and we go to his friends, we don't need tongues anymore. We don't need prophecy anymore. We don't need things of this heavenly home. We will be glorified in the presence of Almighty God, honor and glorify in his holy name. We don't need it at that time. But today we're still here. And because Jesus has not come for his church, then he says, all these things are still in play. You can't say it's not because Jesus hasn't come yet. This is after the fact that this ascended to heaven, so the scripture is taken in context. We're going fully by what the scripture says and understanding what God wants for his church. And then we go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, if that wasn't enough. Oh, it's not. It's something in the past. Then take 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and take it out of the Bible. Why, Pastor? Because in chapter 14 in the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul takes a whole chapter about speaking in tongues. The purpose, the order, how the things are done. Why even write about it? It was just a one-time experience. Why even give instruction to the church how it's going to happen? It was a one-time experience. No, my friend, no, my brother. It was not a one-time experience. God is going to power His Spirit in a mighty and a dy dynamic way. God is still in His throne. God is still delivering. God is still using His power, His authority. Man is blinded by things we surround us, but there's no greater power. There's no greater anointing in the life of a believer than the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God upon your life. We need to go be focused. We need to go forward. We need to understand the greater things God has in our behalf that we might understand that He has great things that He wants to bless our lives. As we go forward and understand that speaking of tongues is a deeper walk, a more more mature walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. But then let me clarify this also. And make this very clear so we understand. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking of the tongues, this is really good, is not a requirement to make it to heaven. Got it? Don't fall off the chair. To get to heaven, you must be born again. That's the condition. Then, that to the Holy Spirit is an add-on, a blessing from God into your life. It makes you better believe. It anoints you with power. It gives you what you need in your Christian walk. But you see, if you look at the book of Acts, chapter number 1, verse number 8, Jesus spoke about this and delivered this challenge to the people. He said the following words. And you shall receive power. Well, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses to, unto me into Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. It says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power. If you see it in the biggest dumbness, which means dynamite, power, explosion. He says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, this is Jesus speaking, book of Acts, chapter 1, verse number 8, before his ascension to heaven. He's giving final instructions. He's telling them, they have no idea to get ready to leave, but he's setting down the foundation. Because I want you to understand when he's giving the messages, I will no longer be here with you. I will not be visible to you. I will not be accessible like I've been the last three and a half years. But I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you have received it, you will receive power, an anointing, a power of God to go forward and you walk with Jesus Christ. And the reason why he gives this is twofold. Number one, he knew that a great tribulation would come to the church. He knew great persecution was coming to the church because of Jesus Christ. He represented a challenge to establish religion and faith of the people of that time. So he knew, just as Saul of Tarsus was going to carry it out, the persecuted of the believers, he knew this was coming. So he prepared the church and he needed power. Part of what? To have the courage to stand up. To have the determination to stand on your faith. Not to deny Jesus Christ. To have the courage to even face death itself and give your life for the cause of Jesus Christ. You're going to need power. You need strength to understand 
great things are going to come against your life. Your faith is going to be challenged. Your faith is going to come to a crossroads of life, and you have to make choices. But oh, the Holy Spirit of God has come upon your life. There will be such a tremendous power. You'll say, how can I deny my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? How can I walk away from everything that Jesus Christ has done for me? And church today, I challenge you to understand that God delivers the same challenge to the church today that we understand. The power of God comes to help you to fight temptation with your life. Devil is like the roaring lion seeking who may devour. He knows that if he destroys your life, destroys your family, he hurts the church. Because you are the church. You make the church. But if he comes into your life and deposit power and authority and anoint to your life, temptation will come. The attack of the enemy will come. Many things will come against you. But you will stand strong on the promises of God because within you is a power that surpasses all understanding. The power of the Holy Spirit of God upon your life. You shall receive power. An anointing to go forward and understand this is to help you fight the battle, to win the battle, to do great and mighty things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says to anoint you. As you speak the word, the people will deliver not just words, they will deliver the anointed gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. It gives you the ability to better use the weapons that God has given you. It anoints your words. It anoints your message. It anoints you to challenge all the people was it is no longer just you. You're on the vessel of God, under God's anointing, to channel the lives and hearts of people that need to deliver their sin and their affliction as they go forward. And you, the believer in Jesus Christ, have that power. See, you and I will not change the lives of people. It's the spirit within us, the anointing within us, the power of God within us that will give us knowledge and wisdom to say the right thing at the right time. Give us the weapon we need in order to touch the lives of people because at that moment we are God's vessel. That's why I said, you shall receive power. In order to put it down to a little simpler way to understand about your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ is uh, everybody has a car. Some have two cars, some have a car in a and well, why even go there? Well, you just have car lots at the house, right? But the bottom line is this. As you go out to get gasoline, you understand one thing. You can use a low grade and fill it up with less money. And the car will run. Now as efficient it will make the run, but it'll run. It'll work. It's going to be okay. But you understand the higher grade of gas you buy and put into the tank, the better performance you get for your car. If your engine could speak to you, and you use plus, you say, thank you. If you use Supreme, you say, yes, this is awesome. Everything's going to work really good. This is really what we needed. We need the top of the line to give you the best performance. And you walk with Jesus Christ, the low grade has been your salvation. You're set to go to heaven, yes. But the deeper you get into the water, and the more you get from God, the better you're going to function. The better is going to be your relationship, your ability to touch the lives of people. Greater things shall you do, for I go to the Father. And Jesus said, why did he say this? Because he knew the Holy Spirit was going to come upon to believe the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, man, you watch me do great things, you're going to do greater things. Because the Spirit of God is going to come upon you, that you might be anointed to do great and mighty work. Because that's what the Holy Spirit is all about. That's what speaking in the New Testament is all about, that we understand that we go forward. God is asking us to do these things in order that we might better enhance his kingdom and fulfill the last call that in the latter days the Lord will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Now people, we can choose to be part of the revival or we can just sit back and watch that. But having the truth, it's your call. It's your responsibility. It's your desire. It's your passion. And if you serve Christ for the right reason, for the right reason, Pastor, that you fell in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are willing to pay the price. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you want to be part of it. You're so in love with what Jesus did for you and you do for everybody else. And believe me, I've said countless times from behind this pulpit to our congregation, you can't give what you don't have. So receive. Ask it of God. The fullness of His Spirit upon your life. And I said, well, Pastor, I, I don't want to be a pastor ever. I'm not asking to be a pastor. I may mean, be a teacher in Sunday school. I'm not asking you to do that either. I'm asking you to be a believer in Jesus Christ, a warrior for the Lord Jesus Christ, to take up the standard, take up the armor of God. And when the armor of God is upon you, you know how to use the weapon that God has given you. You're walking in the battle saying, I'm going to see what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen 
that God's in control of all things. So what does the Bible teach about speaking and tongues? Okay, now we're ready to start preaching. You ready? <laughs> First of all, let me just share with you what John the Baptist said about speaking in other tongues. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 3, verse number 11. Now John the Baptist was sent to pave the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. He was sent to prepare the people and his message would repent, and when God is at hand, and he was baptizing people unto repentance. And when they came the time for them to say, well, are you the one? The people want to know you. I mean, you're doing great things. I mean, if you ever read this story, or you know about John the Baptist, he, he would freak you out. Well, he got you out. Because you'd be out in the middle of the desert. Here comes a guy dressed like a caveman, all right? Jumps from the out behind the rock and behave, you can't do that, man. You be prepared like really quick. His mission was just to prepare the way. And once he started having a lot of followers, see, I don't know if you know this, but he had followers too. He had disciples too that followed him. And so when Jesus begins his ministry, then they say, okay, well, who? What's it about? And of course, you always stand in the corner behind your man. Who do you stand behind us? Who would want to be the main man? So I'm sure his people would say, you're the man. Hey, John, you're the man. Man, there's been four years of silence between the Old and New Testament. There's been fire all this time. All of a sudden, here comes a new man with a new gospel. A new, uh, it's got to be you. So let me ask you something, John the Baptist. What do you have to say? Are you the man? Here's his answer. Matthew 3, 11. I indeed baptize you in water for repentance. But he who is coming after me, he is mightier than I, whose sandal I am not worthy even to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. With the Holy Spirit and fire. Mention, revival, power, authority, God's power, God's spirit. God's fire, God's passion, God's anointing upon the lives of people. I baptize you in water as a sign to all men of repentance of your sin. But the one coming behind me is going to fill you with fire, with a passion to go beyond all understanding. That they don't need a physical Jesus to look at. Their faith will carry them to tremendous victories because the fire of God is going to burn within the life. And people, well, there's fire, you move. Well, there's fire, people are watching. Man, I'm mindful of the fact that a couple of months ago we were at Robert's house one night. And there was fire, and the whole neighborhood was there for a garage fire. Now, when the fire of God is speaking about the fire within the souls and hearts of people to bring revival to a lost mankind, that we would instruct the people that we have the anointed, that even though we walk through trying times, even though we have problems and difficulties, we know in whom we have believed that there's a passion and there's a fire where they said, no, we can't give up. We've been called to serve, we will serve under the anointed of Almighty God. And what flows through this mouth, what flows through these hands is the power of God for deliverance, for help. For he, for so many things that Jesus wants for his people, he just needs people to desire, to ask, to be filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit of God. I'll finish this portion of the message. Because I'm going to save a whole message for the day of Pentecost. I'm going to share with you, and what did Jesus say about all this? In the book of Acts, chapter number 1, verses 4 and 5, Jesus said the following, and being assembled with them, he commanded not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father, which he said to have heard from me. For John, truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not in too many days from now. Jesus, not, like I said, just said to him, and he tells a multitude there. Peter, yes, John, yes, only yes, everybody was there, and all the people. Do not leave Jerusalem until you have received the power of the Holy Spirit of God. I don't want you to hold one service. I don't want you to open one church. I don't want you to do nothing. The church is going to be based on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God. The church will walk in authority and power, but anointed, vested by the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. 
be a one child. Sent to us by Jesus Christ himself. He said, well, I will send you a comforter. He will lead you to all truth. And this comforter, one of the ministries of this comforter is the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues. Just when you do this, I want you to wait there. I don't want you to do a thing. Stay there and wait and wait and wait until you receive the promise of the Father. Here's a big clue for your understanding. There's a waiting period. There's a time of patience. A time to wait upon the Lord. See, if you want a three-second revival, you want a five-minute invitation just fulfilled, you need to spend time with God. You know how long these people wait? They waited ten days. Man, did we even wait 10 minutes? They waited 10 days. And I've said this before. I believe that there was more than 120 when this first started. Because when something is new, a lot of people show up. But it takes time, it takes time. Oh, well, I got something to do. I got something else to do. I got this to do. I got to do this. I got... And they start getting small and small. But when it finally happened, and we'll get into that next week, there was 120 people. Because they waited upon the Lord. They were patient. And they understood that without Jesus they could do nothing. But with him they could do all things. And this power that was going to come upon their lives. Initiated by the speaking in tongues and the spirit of violence. Was going to deliver them the victories they would need to move forward. In the ministry that God had for his church in the way of all. The church foundation was based on the manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God. As patiently they waited upon the Lord. Do nothing, touch nobody, minister to nobody until you receive the fullness of God's. So I challenge the church today. For all those that are listening on the Facebook, for those that are here in the service this morning. I challenge you, spend time with God. Go into the presence of God, acknowledging your need for a deeper walk, a bigger, a bigger commitment. Oh, I understand. Some are going through very trying times during this pandemic, but nothing so big that God can't have. Don't make those issues that surround you bigger than the God that you serve. Don't, re don't reduce your God to the need that you have. Make him bigger than that. Make him understand that you're committed to him is in spite of all those things. Yeah, there are other things held in your life, but the greatest thing you need in your life is the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. In order to move forward, God, that I might receive the fullness of your spirit. I might receive your Holy Spirit that I might be able to touch the lives of this. I might be a better witness. I can carry the torch of Christianity. I can deliver a challenge to the lives of people. I can confront the enemy, not in the name of my church or my pastor, in the name of God Almighty, but of the Spirit that is within me. Let God minister to us. From today forward, make time to say, God, make me this. I really want this on the Father. I want this for my life. I want it for my family. I want it for my church. I want it for my city. I want it for my country. We want it for this one. For in the latter days, he will pour out of his spirit. Will you give us? Will you be a willing participant? Are you going to stand back and watch what's going to happen? You have a call from God. You have a challenge from God this morning to put your life in motion under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. And yes, you'll be criticized. Some will look upon you and say, well, he's not holy enough, he's not worthy enough. Forget what people say. It's not about people, it's about you and God. And what God wants to do for your life. For the scripture teaches me, the last shall be first anything. We need to understand. There are no second hands in the hands of God. You are special on this life. And just like he reached down to touch you in your most miserable state of life, let you reach out to him and be a person of his hands. Let him deposit into your life the power of the Holy Spirit of God that you might be used in. I ask, are there any orders in the house? Are there any people willing to spend the time? 
to open their lives and ask God for that experience. To say, Heavenly Father, I want to experience some passion with Son. I want to feel that power in my life. I want to be part of that in time revival. If this is your desire, I want you to stand up and agree with you. As you go forth in your commitment to God, God will honor your faith. Give you the patience to wait upon Him. And like it in the heart, the passion desire to do great and mighty things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. So you're in the house, or you're watching at home, wherever you might be, and you're willing to participate, you accept the challenge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stand down and pray with you this morning. May God will just come in such a special way. And take you. You're unique. You're one of a kind. You're not going to be like anybody else. God is going to use you for who you are. For who you are and where you came from. He's going to use you. Ask not to be like anybody else. Ask Him to be in you because of who you are in Him. And because He lives, you will see the power of God manifest in your life. Holy Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we come, Lord, acknowledging your greatness and your love and your understanding. We're thankful, Lord, for all the blessings we stored upon our lives. You bless us in so many different ways. But it's time for the church to make a commitment to you. And so many times you've come to us. So many times you've mentioned to our needs. And it's time that today we come and answer the call to service. It's time that we put aside all our excuses. It's time that we have a passion for you. Impact the world that we're in today. We have a hurting world. We have a hurting nation. We have a divided nation. But Heavenly Father, you will have the power of unity, of bonding, of healing God, and bringing revival. So I come to the source, and the source is you. Heavenly Father, that they reach out to you today. As they reach out, Lord, and introduce themselves to be a vessel in your hands. To be used of you, to be anointed of you, that your spirit might flow through them. And that this morning, Heavenly Father, as they go forward, every day, every evening, they pray and seek this blessed encounter of the baptism of the Holy Spirit by Stephen and his sons. It's something of today. It's for your people who are called by your name. We will seek you. We will pray until we find you. And we will be rewarded with revival because of your Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, let your spirit to pray in this place. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. That every service, every song, every message, everything that flows from the altar of this church might be anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, hurry up. That the Spirit of Almighty God would come over your house and your people. We might see mighty and great works for end time. And bring many to the foot of the cross because of who you are. It is through your spirit. It is through your power. It is through your anointing that we reach out to your loving Father. And in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we're trusting, we're believing, we're reaching out to you, we're asking, we're begging, we're pleading for revival. Awake me to the church. Awake me to the believers. I call to repentance. I call to anointing. I call to war. The infilling of power and Holy Spirit. The manifestation of your glory that the world might see. For oh, Heavenly Father, we're grateful for your love. We've come this far, but there's a lot more of this story. We have greater and minor things for your church. If the people are called by your name, just stay the us. I deliver this message. I will finish this challenge next Sunday. We have a whole week to seek the fullness of your spirit. There at home, as we pray and we seek that anointing, it will come. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, let Pentecost come alive in your church once again. For I ask it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. The name that is above all names. The name of Jesus. 
I pray hunger for those of this congregation, for the ones who put into my keeping, and I might deliver the menu they need, the food they need, the challenge they need to carry forth, Lord, the gospel of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Revival is here. Revival has come to those that seek it. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. We honor Lord by the Holy Name. It's because of you. Thank you, Jesus.